the time is finally here. Let's break down some Tua film. What is up, Finn fans? This is gonna. This is it. I've been waiting a very long time to do this. I had to get all the footage. Now we're not doing every single uh, snap he's done because that will literally be like a three-hour video. We're going to do some good, some bad, some ugly. We're going to dissect it, all that good stuff. Uh, see what's Tua's fault. See what's the wide receiver's fault. See what's the offensive line's fault. See what's a, a combination of faults. We're looking at it all. So if you're coming into this looking at it thinking, um, you know, say I, I pinpoint something. I'm like, look, you could see the offensive line. And you're instantly going to be like, no, Doug, it's Tua. Look at Tua. Just, you might as well just because we're objective. Be objective. No Tua love. No Tua hate. Just watch the film. Break it down. That's what we're doing here objective before we jump into all that great stuff though patchvibes.com this patch this fantastic patch they're making jerseys they got merino they got zonka they got a, a ton of different jerseys check them out use the promo code ddw you get 20 percent off on your order so be sure to go over check out patchvibes.com so what i did is i kind of scroll through my um my comment section twitter you know Instagram, all um, everywhere, right? To kind of get an idea of the positives and the negatives that people feel of Tua before we break down film. And here are the, you know, the positives are, you know, for, see, it's very contradicting though, because I get positives that say he's got good ball accuracy, which he does. He has very good ball accuracy. I've heard people say, you know, he's very smart, good pocket presence, this, and you know, those types of things, right? Then the negatives, he's too small. He's scared, I've heard. He doesn't throw over 20 yards. He's a check down machine, I'm hearing. No arm strength, no pocket presence, slow. He doesn't run fast. Uh, the NFL open versus Alabama open, and he doesn't throw contested one-on-one -on -one balls. Those are the things I've heard. So we're going to look at the film. We're going to talk about it. We'll see. Uh, we're, we're just going to jump into it. i got to stop beating around the bush or this video is going to be four hours long. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is we're going to, like I said, we're going to go from game to game. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is his first snap, uh, passing snap. And that's the one he took where he uh, got sacked and uh, fumbled the ball. So we're going to look at this. Um, this is going to probably be a short one, a short little clip, because he had Aaron Donald screaming at him. So I'm going to play it, and we'll see. Drops back, right? At this point, get the ball out. And this is something that he's going to need to learn as a rookie. Just get the ball out. You got to be a little bit quicker. And again, this is his very first pass in the NFL. So as much as you know, people who don't like Tua and as much as people want to call me apologist, I'm going to give him a pass on this one. But he should have got it out. I wouldn't throw it here, actually, now that I'm looking at it, because this guy's going to jump this route. So I'm not throwing it here. And I probably am not throwing it here, like I said, because this guy jumped the route. Here. This is where the ball should have went. But you could see where he's looking. He's looking over here at these three receivers. And there's defenders here. So what he does is he steps up. Because he, he kind of can't look to his left. If you look, once this guy cuts the route, he sees him getting beating Austin Jackson so he can't really turn to his left to throw that ball <clears throat> he can't throw it here because he's got these two guys in his face so he tries to and again jumping the route jumping the route and he's not even breaking his route yet so he tries to step up and he and he takes a, a dirty sack so it, it, that was a combination, right? Could he have gotten the ball out quicker? Yes. If he wasn't a rookie taking his first snap, of course, he could have got the ball out quicker. So this is second and six ball on their 47. March down the field a little bit on this one. This one's going to be a quick pass to Preston Williams. <clears throat> a little bit inaccurate on this pass. He kind of throws it in front of him, but I also think he thinks that Preston Williams is going to continue running his route if you see. You got Smythe in motion, play action here. Uh, Preston Williams beat his guy, right? He also you also have Devontae Parker here beating his guy. He's gonna throw it right here into the soft spot for Preston Williams. Beat his guy. Got off on the slant, beat his guy. 
There you go. Now, if he leads, if he throws this properly, right, and leads him, he'll be able to take it up the field for a little bit more. I'm not saying touchdown because this guy's probably going to come up or this guy's going to come over, but he could take it up for a few more yards, <clears throat> throws it, and unfortunately, Preston Williams falls down. If I go back a little bit, let's see if he needed to fall down. Yeah, I think it was a low thrown ball. Yeah, it, the ball was thrown a little bit to the outside. If he would have hit him in stride, like I said, he probably could have took the ball up the field. So a little inaccurate on that pass. So this is third and 11 from the 40-yard line. This play is going to be a screenplay to Devontae Parker. You're going to have these two uh, guys come up and block. This is another play where I don't know if Tua is just trying to get settled into playing. Is he getting settled into NFL you know, speed? Is he getting settled into the fact that he almost died? to Aaron Donald, but you could see here that, you know, Parker's going to come in motion. It's going to be a screenplay here. These two guys are going to go up and block these two gentlemen. And I just inaccurate ball. Got to place it here. He's not blocking no one. So it's going to be tackled. So regardless, this play was a dumb play call. This will not have been converted because there's no way I think that's Gazicki is getting a block on him at all. But inaccurate pass. He threw it a little too far forward. If we look at what happened to him in the pocket, I don't think he really – no, he didn't have any pressure. So he had time to plant his feet, get that ball off to him, and you know at least try to bounce it to the outside here, let him get his block, maybe get down the field, get more yardage. But unfortunately, he overthrew it. A little bit inaccuracy there. But again, first game. Why well, you keep saying it again, first game, Doug? Because it is. <laughs> it is. It's first drive of his NFL career. He's got those got those jitters, but inaccurate. It's just an accurate pass. He overthrew him. I think, honestly, he if he gets the ball to him, he'd be able – because he's going to make his block here. He's not making his block. I think he'd be able to take it to the outside and uh, get first down and more. This is a play that I wanted to talk about because – this is one of the narratives that is put onto her, right? He doesn't throw contested balls. He doesn't throw the ball down the field and all that stuff, right? It's third and, third and 10, third and five here from their own 15. <clears throat> Tua is going to get Gazicki on a streak route. He puts this ball exactly where Gazicki needs it. And I have two angles for this one. It was a drop. Now, Gazicki, nine times out of 10, probably catches this. We'll look at it again. But the placement of the ball. And the throw is a thing of beauty. And this is one of the things that a lot of people say, you know, Tua never showed me anything. Tua never showed me that he can, he has stuff to be good. He showed me nothing. I hear that a lot from people who don't like Tua. This right here is one of the passes that show me he could put that ball where it needs to be. And you'll see it here. Like I said, you have Gizicki running down the field. Aaron Donald in his face. Again, bad blocking by Austin Jackson. Bad blocking by Austin Jackson. Aaron Donald in his face, about to hit his arm. Puts that ball up. One-on-one -on -one with Gazicki. Should have caught this. Gazicki should moss anybody he's kept playing. A little bit of grabbing. Again, I got another angle for this. Hits him in the hands. That's a great pass. Great ball placement. Puts it where it needs to be. It's just a drop. And let's see how far he actually puts this ball in the air. Right? We'll see how far. So he throws it from about the six. That hits him at the 40. 34-yard pass, give or take. So he does push it down the field. This is the first game of his career. We'll look at it at another angle so you can see exactly where he places this ball. <clears throat> and you can also see how poor – this isn't even Austin Jackson. I take it back. This is Jesse Davis. Jesse Davis struggled by City. Struggled by City. And I was even saying that the rookies did better – than the vets and you could see it here jesse davis just bl he blows right by him but you could see right where he places that ball right there you got to catch that you got to catch that i'm sorry you got to catch that looks over and a lot of people say oh he doesn't look off defenders he doesn't do no stares down his receivers is another thing i hear a lot he knows Gazicki's running a streak right here. So he doesn't want the safety to be over there. So what does he do? As soon as he gets the ball, he's looking to his right to pull. Look what 24 is doing. Look at the safety. Here's 24. Here's the safety. 
right? Gazicki's running his streak over here. He knows it's going to be a one-on-one with Gazicki. He likes. He knows what Gazicki can do. Again, one-on-one balls, contested balls. He will throw them. So what does he need to do? He needs the safety not to pull over to cover Gazicki. So what does he do? Look at the safety, looking at his eyes. He's looking to the right. There goes the safety, going to his right. Going up to cover, I think this is Devontae Parker on a slant. He's already got the ball off. Puts it where he needs to put it. Got to catch that. You got to catch that. If that was Eric Rowe covering Waller, Waller's catching that. Because you know how many times Eric Rowe was on Waller and Waller was catching it over him? That's not a knock on Kaziki, but you got to catch that ball. So that's that's one like again I showed you a couple bad passes I showed you the sack he took and I saw a couple I showed you a couple bad passes because even the uh, the reception to Preston Williams was a little bit off yes it was a catch but it was a little bit off but this right here that's not on Tua that's a great pass by Tua that's Tua sh- looking off the safety to get the ball where it needs to be it should have been caught another play where the pressure gets to Tua after taking and and you could tell right his very first game starting his very first game going up against the number one defense in the NFL the pressure of that front four started to get into his head and this is a prime example of that right so you have all of these guys he's going to run a simple core route he's running a simple core route he's running an in or out very simple plays right you got all they all they're literally all running curl routes here he gets startled because he has all this pressure in his face and he throws it to Preston Williams who fortunately drops it but if you see here he had a ton of people open right yes but you the thing we also have to realize they look open but look at this man as soon as he curled his route watch him try to jump up because if it was thrown say this is thrown when it needs to be thrown He comes up on it, right? But you have him open, him open, him open, and him open, right? And he, which Tua throws, has a bigger cushion from his defender to be able to turn it upfield and get some extra yardage. And I think that that's what Preston Williams was thinking here because if you look, right, I'll show you the pressure now. ton of pressure in his face. They send four. They got two down linemen, two outside linebackers standing up. <clears throat> ton of pressure and as they double team over here this i think this is um solomon kinley let me rewind yeah that's solomon kinley that's the big boy great uh run block and not very good on the pass block he gets swim swimmed on that's not even a word doug so he's got pressure in his face but he's already got the ball out because these are all curl routes so he's already got the ball he could have hit him but again defenders are closer they weren't as close on preston williams hits preston williams right in the chest catches it but i think and it's jumping i don't understand i don't know why he's jumping i think he's more concentrated on trying to break it up break this defender and get up the field drops it it's easy drops easy easy drop here you got to catch that right in the chest catch that you could go inside outside or get extra yardage just to drop that's not to his fault Hit him right in the chest. And he can even see. He's like, ah. Oh. This is another drop, but this drop is actually to his fault. That other drop was not to his fault. It's uh third and five from our own 31 on this one. He's gonna hit uh Preston Williams on a crossing route across the middle here. Now, he's open. Preston Williams is open. These guys, he's eh, he could probably fit it in here. Um, yeah, you could definitely fit it in here, but he already seen this and he's seen all this room here so he's going to try to get it to Preston Williams you also this is going to be a curl route um corner route here which the defender is not in the right position so he definitely could have dropped it the ball here and gotten a ton of yards here but he drops it off to Preston Williams who drops it right and in the game you're like ah, oh, come on Preston too many drops from Preston Williams but if you look at it it's bad ball placement by Tua here right like I said you had Gazicki here on that corner route you could have dropped that ball off here but he had Preston here and he sees all this real estate here to get the ball but if you put the ball in front of him he's probably going to beat this defender and get up the field for more but again you had Gazicki up here underthrown underthrown low hit him in the knees 
and that's why he dropped it. You throw it out in front of him, and you let him catch it in stride and keep running, you're going to get a ton of yards in here. Under threw it. Hit him in the knees. He need the ball out of his hands. So that one's on Tua. Now we're going to jump to the Cardinals game. Again, like I said, I'm not going to break down every single um, pass because then this will be like a four-part series. We're going to jump to the Arizona Cardinals game. This is literally the first snap. It's first and 10 from their own 25, 15 minutes ago. This one, too, is going to roll out. He's going to have a defender, blitzing defender, right in his face, and he gets the ball off to Mike Izzicchi. He's got the defender in his face rolling. This is the thing that Tua does very well, and this is the thing that shows me that the hip is fine. The fact that he consistently makes these throws on the run where he has to torque his hip to get that ball off over a defender's hands right into Gizicki. Yes. Is it perfectly passed? No. They were a little bit behind him. Had to, you could see where his hands are, kind of a little bit behind him. You'd prefer it to be in front of him so he can keep getting up the field. But he still catches it, gets up the field, gets some extra yardage on that one. But you could see, again, the hip, to me, this when he constantly makes these throws, it shows that the hip is fine. And there's a zip on that ball. A lot of people like to say he has a weak arm. There's a zip on that ball. So this one, it's first and 10 on our own 46th. Got, game is tied right here. And this is another scenario where it, I don't understand why people keep saying he does not push the ball down the field. He only throws five yard passes and all that stuff. Because you can see here, <clears throat> he's got Preston Williams on a streak and he sees he's got his ba his man beat. I'm, I'm really interested to see if he was running full speed here. Because if he was running full speed, I feel like he should have caught that pass. Looking at it again here, right? Gets off it. He's got his man. Just take off. Tua sees it. Yes, you had this guy, this guy, this guy all open, but you had no over-the-top safety help. You got to take this shot, and he does. So contested one-on-one, -on -one, jump ball. Turns his head back. I think he slows down a little bit here. I could be wrong. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Could be wrong. Just out of his reach. Look at it at a different angle, right? He, knew, he That's where he was going. And, yes, he, he was lo looking at it. None of these safeties. There was no over-the-top safety help, right? They sent a blitz on him. This is good on the offensive line here. Very good on the offensive line. Make it covering one, two, three, four, five, six. Six guys coming at him. Very <laughs> great double block here, right? I just – feel like if he had just a little bit more speed, this is a touchdown. He would have beat his receiver, his corner, and just it's just out of arm's reach. So, yes, you could say Tua should know the speed that Preston Williams has. He overthrew him by a touch, which, yes, it was not caught. Overthrew him by a touch. But I feel like if Preston Williams would have just kept on running, because you could see he turns his head back to look for it, which you're supposed to, obviously, I feel like that would have been a touchdown. This one I'm going to put on Tua overthrown by a touch but i don't know i feel like just a little bit quicker and you would have caught that ball second and five still a tie game seven seven we're on their 33 this is another pass that shows that his hip doesn't bother me his ball velocity doesn't bother me because he zips this ball where it needs to be he's going to take this ball he's going to roll it's play action he's going to roll it out and he's going to hit gaziki on a huge out a curl route not curl route but a huge out route that's going to go all the way back here he's going to thread this right rolling to his left which he loves to do and throwing from his left which he loves to do rolling out and you see here's Gaziki right here you have i think this is bowden here calling for it you have grant here one-on-one -on -one, and you also have a check down here but you have Gaziki and this huge real estate right here if you throw this over the top here which he's already getting ready to throw if we go back a little bit as he's rolling out, he drops it over here. You have the safety that's going to come over here, right? So he's looking. Drop it off here. You can drop it off to him who's rolling here. And you have uh, Grant who's running here. But the safety is going to can come over on that one. <clears throat> and he just fits it right where it needs to be on the run. Defender on his back. Three guys in the vicinity. Puts the ball exactly where it needs to be. And we can check this off as another pass that shows 
he has what it takes. A lot of people, are you do I don't see anything. I don't see any of his gameplay. I don't see any spark. I see nothing that shows me he can be a good quarterback. There's an example, I think, three or four that I showed. And I'll show you guys at a different angle. So play action here, rolling out. You see Gazicki. He actually stumbles here. I didn't even notice that until I look at this angle. He actually stumbles here. He doesn't stumble here. He probably gets there quicker. He stumbles. You have Preston Williams behind him, which why are these two guys in the same vicinity? Is that the play call? Two receivers should not be this close together. I'm sorry. They just shouldn't. Defender has his back, and Tua knows it. He's got to put the ball here because if he puts it anywhere else, the defender can just smack the ball down. Leads him. This ball is going here. Leads him on the, on the throw. Gets it where it has to be. Because if he leads him too much, you could see it. If he leads him too much, this defender is already coming up. So if he leads him too much, it could be an interception here. Gets it where it has to be. On the run to his left, which is his dominant arm, but on the run with the ball where it had to be. Great play. So first and 10 on our own 20-yard line. It's a tie game at 14-14 because we did end up scoring after that. This is another play where people say to me, Doug, doesn't push it down the field. He doesn't throw contested one-on-one -on -one balls. He doesn't trust his receivers to throw one-on-one -on -one balls. Well, you have all of this space here for uh, uh, Pat – Preston Williams, my brain, and the safety is too far center field, right? So you have all this room. And again, if we roll it back, he looks off the safety. People underestimate that. People don't notice that about Tua. He is not looking over here. He is not looking over where he wants to throw the ball. He is looking here making the safety stay center field. There's a single high safety. That's it. Single high safety. So with Preston Williams running his streak route, this single high safety has to cover both sides of the field. And what is Tua doing? If you look, he's looking straight down the middle. If he looked over here, he would start cheating over to this side. He wouldn't be able to fit that ball in. He's looking straight down the middle. Then he looks over, instantly snaps his head, looks over because he trusts his guys. Again, a lot of people are like, well, why doesn't he throw contestant balls? Does he not trust his receivers? No, he knows this is a streak route. I know for a fact Preston Williams can probably beat this guy. If not, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to throw it up, and I know that this man can catch it. That's exactly what happened. Like I said, ton of real estate here, absolute ton of real estate here. So where are we sitting at? The 13-yard line, where does this ball come down? At the 49, 48-yard line. You do the math. More than 20 yards. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but look where he hits him. Right where it needs to be. Absolutely right where it needed to be. Beat him. He has to put it in the right spot. You do not put... You overthrow it. It's getting intercepted. You underthrow it. It's not being caught because the defender is literally all over his booty. And he actually falls. He's falling into Preston Williams. So this is on Preston Williams too for making the catch. But look where he places it. Right where it needs to be in the man's hands with the safety over the top. Again, he overthrows that. 34 is intercepting that ball. He underthrows it. It's not being caught because he had the corner up his butt. Pin drops it. Right where it needed to be in Preston Williams' hands. But people don't see sparks. People don't see evidence of Tua actually becoming a good quarterback. I've seen nothing. How do you not see? This is a perfect pass. A 30-something yard in the air pass. Drops it where it needs to be. Overthrows it, intercepted, and underthrows it, incomplete. Puts it where it needs to be. Same drive. 14-14. And again, you know, I'm going to keep saying it because I have a list in front of me of things that people say. He doesn't throw the ball over 20 yards. Doesn't throw one-on-one -on -one contested. NFL Open versus Alabama Open. I've shown you how many NFL open passes that he's tried to make. This one right here. Again. <laughs> Again. Let's rewind it just a little bit. He knows he's got another streak route on his left. He knows my man beats that corner every time. I can chuck that ball up. Hey, pre-snap. I got a single high safety. I'm going to do it again. They keep thinking I can't make these throws. 
I'm going to do it again. Snaps the ball. Where is he looking, ladies and gentlemen? He's looking to his right. He's trying to drag the safety over to his right because he knows he's got this streak route, right? And the safety stays center field. So again, he's got this huge area here to throw it. No one's open. <laughs> he could probably fit this ball in here, right? But no one's open. No one's open here. But he sees this one-on-one -on -one and he's got the corner has maybe half a step, if that, on him. But again, this safety is playing center field because you also have this receiver here run down the field. So he has to cover both sides of the field. And that's what this this uh, safety does, right? Single high safety. When he he plants his foot, crap! I gotta catch. I gotta get over here to make up the space. Throws it up. He has him now, and of course, pass interference. Had him. Had Devonte Parker there, and we we all know Devonte Parker would have caught that. I got another angle for you. Looking, looking over here. He's looking right into his eyes. He's looking over here. Boom, turns his head, lets that sucker go, but he doesn't throw it down the field. Doesn't throw contested one-on-one -on -one balls. Doesn't give his players a chance. <clears throat> but you see the pull there, right? Right there. See how he's falling off? Because he pulled his shoulder, pass interference. He would have caught that. And this is what people don't realize, right? People say Tua doesn't throw these one-on-one -on -one contested balls. Tua doesn't throw it down the field. Because all they do is they look at his stats. Yards per uh, attempt, yards in the air. Yard oh, look, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. I'm looking at the stats. That's because they're not getting completed. Because <laughs> they're either getting dropped or it's, he'll overthrow it. I'm going to say that. Or situations like this. So, yes, of course, you look at the stats and it says, well, he doesn't do it. Watch the film. That's why I'm doing this. Watch the film. So the Dolphins are up 21-17 right now. They have their ball on their own 28-yard line. And I picked this play because a lot of people talk about the dynamic play of Josh Allen, how he can extend plays, how he can make plays with his feet, how he does all that stuff. And Tua can't. I haven't seen Tua do it all season. Tua stinks at that, yada, yada. This play right here is a prime example of the offensive line giving up pressure and Tua running and making a play, right? So you see, they only send four, and they did they did this a lot to this offensive line. And I think it's because they had a ton of rookies on there that the opposing defensive coordinator said, we're going to throw stunts at them and really mess with their heads. Because Eric Flowers, this defender right here, and your, your running back tried to block him. And just what is going on? Now, he could drop the ball off here to Gazicki. He does have a defender here. He does have a defender here. This guy's not even done running his route, which is a curl route here. And then you have Devontae Parker here who's going to completely mauled by his defender, right? So he's got pressure. He's got pressure. And he's got this defender who's about to get up and pressure. Again, drop it off here. So what does Tua do? He takes off. And he throws it across his body to Devontae Parker who ends up getting open for a first down. Extends the play, throws it across his body, and you know how much arm power it takes to throw across your body across the field, the other side of the field, to get it where it needs to be? I'll show you at a different angle, and you'll see how bad the offensive line did. <laughs> I'm telling you, people underestimate how a bad offensive line can really screw with a quarterback, but geez Louise here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They kept... Seven in. Why did they keep seven in, Doug? Because the offensive line was struggle bus city and Tua needed time to throw the ball. Seven, right? God bless you, Durham Smythe. You got beat. Um, I think this is Ahmed or Brita. Again, my brain helps here because Eric Flowers is just standing there having a, a, a nice lemonade. What are you doing, my dude? You have three guys blocking one guy. You have Robert Hunt blocking his guy. Durham Smythe, like I said, God bless you, gets beat, steps up, which pocket presence, pocket presence. You step up, Eric Flyers comes back and makes the crack block. You have all the time. He sees him. He sees Gazicki right here, but he decides, screw it. I'm going to throw. Look at those hips. If you got bad hips, you can't make this throw. 
right where it needs to be in the gut. If you don't have arm strength, you are not making that throw. On the move, across your body, you are not making that throw. You aren't. I'm sorry. So everyone who says he doesn't have arm strength or velocity or anything, across the body, look at this. Steps up, extends the play, gets it where it needs to be. Tie game, 24-24, third and six here. About nine minutes left in the third quarter. Got to a beat us. Single high safety, so no streaks beat us, but we're going to send the house at you. Let's see at what point would Tua have had somebody open. Nope, still covered. He had him here. But again, def the defender was actually hiding behind Gizicki, which I think is hilarious, but he would have been able to get the ball to him. But by the time he would have able to get the ball to him, let's say still and right there. Could have probably thrown it over the top, or same thing with him throwing it over the top. Defender in his face. He was r not ready. I'll tell you right there. Defender in his face. No one open. No one open. Now they're open. <laughs> he had no time to throw the ball. You can't blame Tua for that one. We'll look at it at a different angle and see what happened with this one. So they sent a ton, right? Ahmed's back there. They, but it's another stunt where you had guys dropping back. You had one, two, three, four, five coming in. We had six staying in to help block Jesse Davis. Do you, do you, do you not see the man to your right? What, Jesse Davis. And people said, there's no way the rookies play better than the vets. Who, on the, who in the Sam hell were you blocking, Jesse Davis? Drops back. Like, did that mess you up? You're a vet. Why is him dropping back messing you up? And they did that a lot to this Dolphin offensive line. And I'm telling you, when we get to the Broncos game, you're going to see. A lot of people blame Tua for the Broncos game loss. But the offensive line played bad. Stunts, for some reason, get into the offensive line's head and messes them up. Why is this guy, Why these two guys dropping back, right? So they only sent four. They actually only sent four, and the Dolphins kept in six. Free, just free at Tua. Three on one. He's holding him. I think that that uh, flag is thrown. These two guys on him, just free. Free at him. But it's Tua's fault. So this is 31 to 24. We're now down by seven. This is third and nine from our own eight. And I'm picking this play because it shows – I talk about that, yes, Tua had his struggles, which we I showed. I showed a, f a few uh, overthrown passes. And this is only game two. <laughs> this is only game two. We have a lot of games to get to. Uh, overthrown – you know, Tua had his struggles. But also, the offensive line didn't help him and the wide receivers didn't help him. Whenever I say that, people say it's an excuse. It's a fact. This is prime example here that the wide receivers didn't know where to line up at some points. If you watch here – Right? He is not supposed to be lined up over here. He is telling him, you need to move. Gazicki is now yelling at him, you've got to be on the other side, Grant. Other side, Grant. Why are they... T look, look. Over here. Hey. Hey. Wrong side. Help, help a man out. Get, just help him out. Other side, other side. I had to tell him to play. Hands like Gizicki's like, come on, man, help him out. Third and eight here. Put that ball where it needed to be. And they needed to convert this because they were down by seven. Absolutely needed to convert this. And he threw a dot. He threw a bullet of a dot here. Different angle, yelling at him. Other side, other side, other side. Come on. <laughs> threw a dot here. Pressure in his face. Again, pressure in his face. They, 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 I'm telling you, watching coach film just opens your mind to so many different things because you see what the other defenses started doing to the Dolphins because they started running stunts. Gazicki was supposed to block him, but he went to the inside and he went to the outside. Again, same thing here to the outside, to the inside, messed with Gazicki, free roam right at, at Tua's face. 
with the man coming at his face. He Oh, he can see him coming at his face. Throws it where it needs to be. Right where it needs to be. The best thing he could do is try to get his arm in there, but Devontae Parker is going to catch it. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite plays by Tua, and this is another play that I wish he did more, um, which I think as he gets more acclimated to the NFL, he gets more confidence in his game, he will do more. But this is another play where they sent a blitz at him, right? He's no one in the backfield to help him block. The front five is just struggle bus city against this pass rush, so they sent extra blitzes at him. And by the time anyone gets open, you see – and we're going to look at it at a different angle. They only sent four because, again, they love to throw in these stunts at this offensive line. Just Who are you blocking, Jesse Davis? Why do you keep letting him get through? Do you not like Tua? He's just barely running his route here. He's got a defender in his face. What he do, Makes him miss. Takes off. Makes him miss. <laughs> gets the first down. But he's slow, and he can't make plays with his legs. These are the things that I've heard, and I, I don't understand it. But if you look, right, it looks like one, one, two, three, four, five is coming at him. Looks like they're sending these five. He doesn't look like he's he's uh, blitzing at the quarterback. And what they actually do, drop him back, drop him back. They love to do that to the Dolphins offensive line because they struggle so much with these stunts. Ted Karras blocking no one. You got these two guys on one guy. He pushes him off to Ted Karras, which you're supposed to do, but doesn't block the man. <laughs> so what does Tua do? Whoop! Give him a little Chris Berman. How do you do? Takes off running. <laughs> Just makes him look ridiculous. Gets the first down. Another play that shows that this kid's going to be good. Tied 31-31. First and 10 from their 40. There's about four minutes left in the game. This is a play where... He's a little inaccurate on this pass. It's a deep pass. It's pushing it down the field again just to fit that narrative. Uh, if he throws it, you'll see. He's get, he gets Gazicki here. He's going to run a, an inside. He could dump it off to him. He could dump it off to him. He actually has him, but he's already throwing it here. Let's see before he throws the ball. So he's got that single high safety, and he's actually cheating to this side of the field, so he doesn't really want to throw it to him. He has Parker coming across the middle. Yeah, you're not going to want to throw this ball because you have the safety already cheating to the left side. But again, you have Parker, but here's the first down marker. He has Gazicki, and he has all this real estate right here, and he knows that. So he's going to fit the ball in there. He underthrows it a little bit, but Gazicki does bail him out. If Gazicki didn't bail him out, it's probably an interception there. Kind of would have ruined the game for the Dolphins. Show it again backpedaling and that's that's what he needs to work on there right because if he plants his feet he makes that pass which he makes it but because Gizicki helps him out he's backpedaling the whole time because he's got the offensive line again struggling to pass block one-on-one -on -one. look at this backpedaling to give Gizicki enough time to get open to fit that ball in there backpedals Threw it behind him. It, you'd prefer it in the front front of him. Threw it behind him. Backpedaling. Still makes the catch. All right. <clears throat> now we go to the Chargers game. And right now at this point, we're up 7 nothing. We are on our own 13, 14-yard line. It's second and eight. And this is to his bread and butter. This is to a, rolling out to his left and throwing a beautiful dart to Mike Kazicki here. You'll see. Rolling out. Now he can get hit him. Right, He's looking, rolling out to his left. He can hit him. Obviously not going to hit him. You have the defender here. You have Gazicki here, who's like triple coverage. <laughs> it is zone, but they know that they want to get to get to, Zick, get to Gazicki. English Doug, use it. Also a lot of contact past the five yards, but we're not going to talk about that. <clears throat> Pump fakes. He's, again, he wanted to get it to him, but first down marker here, second and eight. He thinks to himself, pump fake, look. Gazicki, he's going to run this route here. He's got all of this real estate here. Let me get my boy the ball from the eight yard line to the 39 yard line. 20 yards. Down the field, rolling to his left, hits him right in the hands. First down, Dolphins. It's it's like I said, it's to his bread and butter. Roll him out to the left. This kid can make the throws, make good velocity throws in the air, pushing it down the field. Again, to just reiterate that 
stuff I heard. This is a play where he tries to force Takaziki, and good thing it was an interception because the ball flies up in the air. Play action here. You have literally two routes running. So the Dolphins are keeping a lot in to block. So you pretty much have two routes running. Lucky we didn't have a legal mate down the field on this one. A ton of blocking here. You had this route, which essentially is a comeback route, and you had a Gizicki on a go route. This is the thing. The run game wasn't working, so they're not going to bite on the play action. So essentially you have all these defenders back here. He had two options to throw to. You had pretty much nothing. So he tries to fit into Gizicki. The ball gets smacked up. He's lucky that it did not get intercepted. But we'll look at it at another angle. Threw it behind him. Should have kind of forced it in here. But again, Gizicki's covered here. I don't even think if he threw it ahead of him, he really would have made the catch. Because I honestly think... <clears throat> Everyone dropped back. No one no one cared about the run because the Dolphins had no run game, and that's another aspect of why the offense struggled so much. It wasn't Tua's fault. It wasn't just the offensive line, just the wide receivers. But having no run game, the defense doesn't have to commit to the run, so they'll just drop back in coverage. And this is what happens. But he should have put the ball out in front of him, maybe gave Kaziki a little bit better of a chance to catch it. Ball gets smacked up like it wasn't intercepted. This is the touchdown pass to Jakeem Grant that not a lot of people realize what Tua did in this play here. So you have Bunch to his right, you had Gazicki, and then you had Patrick Laird to his left. So it's empty set, really spreading the defense out here, trying to get some type of space for him to fit this ball in. Because again, we couldn't run if our life depended on it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And you're going to have... Uh, an, a route go to the outside, a curl route, and a route to the inside over here. And he normally, he just looks over here. This is where he's focusing his entire uh, time. But you have uh, Malcolm Perry going to the outside. And you're going to have Jakeem Grant, like I said, come in on a curl. And then you're going to have Parker go on the inside. And what he does is he stares down Malcolm Perry to get this defender to move away from Grant so he can fit it into Grant for the touchdown. Because if you look, he's looking at Malcolm Perry. There the defender goes with Malcolm Perry. Jakeem Grant's going to find this cushion, and he's going to drop it in there to him. This is another play uh, where Tua tries to fit the ball downfield, one-on-one -on -one coverage to Devontae Parker um, again. He doesn't try to force it down the field. He doesn't try to push it down the field. He doesn't throw one-on-one -on -one coverage, jump balls. That's the narrative I hear, but here's another one. Bad snap. It's not the first bad snap we had uh, from Ted Karras in this game, but bad snap from um, Tua. Picks the ball up, sees that his man is one-on-one -on -one here, just tosses it up to him, and we get the catch, which is what? He threw that from about the 35. He caught it at the 45, forcing it down the field again. People like to call two of the check down, man. If it's there, it's there. But we'll look at it from the other angle. And you'll see. Bad snap. Hits the ball. Hits the ground. Bad snap. Absolute bad snap. Rusher coming right at him. He sees. I got one-on-one -on -one man coverage. Let me just get this ball up to him. Boom. Caught for a first down. Got a nice little zip on that ball, too. This is a play that I just really wish he would have connected on because I think this is another play that would have shut a lot of his doubters up. But this is a play where he's going to get pressure. He's going to have a guy come off of his uh, blind side, hit him in the back. He stays in the pocket, stands up, and makes a pass down the field, but unfortunately overthrows Jakeem Grant here. So, again, this is Jesse Davis getting beat now on the right side. It's the left side. Tua has no time to throw the ball. You think it's a sack here, but he breaks it off. He's a tough kid. A lot of people say he's small, scared, not tough. Tough kid. Rolls out. He sees Jakeem Grant start to roll this way. Tries to fit the ball to him. Again, he's rolling to his right. Never set his feet. If he set his feet, he's making this catch for a touch, making this pass for a touchdown. But with a defender on his back, he never sets his feet. And he's rolling to his right now. So he has to throw across his body, rolling to his right, and unfortunately overthrows him by about like five inches, if give or take, maybe a foot, overthrows him. If not, if he sets his feet when he throws, that's an easy touchdown to Jakeem Grant. 
this is a play that happened that it's like shows you that he could have like watch what he it's a kind of the same type of play right you have Gazicki going on the inside in this on this inside route Tua sets his feet no one in his face again you got to put that ball right here for Gazicki to catch it and potentially get up yards and what does he do puts it right where he needs to be actually between two, two defenders on that one where he throws it right there yeah defender on his back guy right over here throws it right where it needs to be so he can keep running so he misses it on Parker, but then he comes back and makes it on Gazicki. So, again, I'm showing you these to show that he does learn and he can be good because he makes good throws. He makes dumb throws. We've uh, not even – this is game three. He's made dumb throws, but he can make the good throws. Right here is a dumb throw, and this is a throw that he got very, very lucky. Very lucky it wasn't intercepted. He's trying again to fit it to Gazicki. Seems like Gazicki at this point is his favorite player. Gazicki's going to come across the middle here. He does have this whole section of the field open. These guys are covered. So this is it. This is his go to guy right here. Tries to fit the ball in. Tight spot right here. He's trying to fit the ball in here. This defender is watching the ball the whole entire time, making a play on the ball, drops it. <laughs> If this defender was any better, he would have intercepted that ball and potentially pick six it. You know, these offensive linemen aren't that fast. You'd have to hope that Tua can get over there, stop it. But he just gets lucky this is an interceptor. Bad pass. And it, he should not have thrown it, to be honest with you, especially with the defenders that were in front of him. No one was really open at that point when he threw it. Should never have thrown it. But he did have time in the pocket to let these other routes potentially develop. This is one of my favorite plays that uh, Chan Gailey drew up. So for the past two weeks, when he faced the Rams and he faced the Cardinals, the Dolphins would like to roll Tua out to his left. Obviously, it's his dominant throwing hand. So they roll him out to the left. He's more accurate. So what they're going to do here is they're going to roll him out to the left, but they're going to have, I think it's Shaheen, uh, block and then roll out to the right. And he is the only one that will be over here by himself because the whole entire team rolls to the left and this defense is taught stop Tua from throwing to the left side. And you can see it. <clears throat> Sorry, Smythe. He blocks over here, cuts to the outside. Again, Tua's now rolling to his right. This whole defense is stopping him from rolling to his right. You're not going to throw it to him. You're not going to throw it to him. But all alone, Durham Smythe. He throws it across his body, gets it to where it needs to be. Easy touchdown. I love this play. This is one of my favorite plays of the season, just how smart it is for the, the defense, the offense, to mess with the defense. Go one way and then throw it again across his body to the guy he needs to game that everyone wants to talk about is Denver Broncos game the Denver Broncos game was a bad game all around a lot of people like to blame Tua say Tua was inept Tua couldn't do anything Tua wasn't making any throws and he's the reason we lost I disagree on that I do think Tua struggled a little bit but I think that the offensive line struggled severely so did the uh wide receivers and the defense could not stop the Denver Broncos run game but we're talking about Tua on this one so this is going to be a deep pass to Preston Williams again, but again, he doesn't throw the ball down the field, nor does he throw one-on-one, -on -one, nor NFL versus Alabama open. So, that and that right there, this little giddy-up, if you notice what happens to Preston Williams down at the bottom of the screen, that right there. He tries to get the corner to bite. Then Tua lets it go, again, from the 15-yard line, lets it go. He has him. Oh, that's Jakeem Grant. I apologize. That's Jakeem Grant. The ball lands on the other 30. A lot of people say he doesn't have the arm strength. A lot of people say he can't throw it down the field. The ball lands over here from his own 15. You do the math. But just out of the reach of Jakeem Grant, who's fast. Fast, fast, fast guy. We'll look at it from the other angle so you can see exactly what happened. Again, you're going to see this a lot in, in this section of the video. Five. They're sending five. Let's see if there was a stunt or if it's just a straight rush. Just a straight rush, but <sighs> Austin Jackson with a guy in his face, Tua, has a guy in his face, evades pocket presence, plants his feet, gets the ball down the field, again, threw it from his own 15, and look where this ball landed. They are 30. Kid has an arm. Kid can throw it deep, but way 
overthrown of Jakeem Grant. Now, is that Jakeem Grant's fault or is that Tua's fault? Jakeem Grant did a little stutter step to try to get um, the corner off of him. Did that slow him up? If he would have just ran straight full speed, would he have gotten there? We don't know. Bad play all around. But you saw just a glimpse of how this offensive line just do do butter. But you also see how far Tua can actually throw the ball. People say he doesn't have arm. People say he can't throw it down the field. Well, so this is another play where he, again, tries to throw it down the field. A ton of pressure in his face. But in this one, he has these guys, right? Can get it to him. Can get it to him. Jakeem Grant's going to run it in and go. Right, try it again to, to mess with this corner. You got these guys going on the inside, which he could just get it to Gaziki right here. Potentially have it go upfield for a uh, uh, first down. He's stepping up in the pocket because it's completely collapsing around him, running forward while running to his left. Steps up. He sees Jakeem Grant right here, is beating his man, tosses it up the field. But again, could have got it to him for a first down. Had him, unfortunately, overthrew him. So he does force it down the field. He needs to work on his deep ball accuracy a little bit more. But you could see ton of pressure. Austin Jackson just keep getting bullied consistently, stepping up, just floated a little too much, put a little bit too much air onto that. If not, that's a touchdown to Jakeem Grant. So this is kind of a theme of the day for um, Tua, which is a lot of pressure in this kid's face. They're going to send five. There's going to be a delayed blitz from the corner here. You're going to send four straight up and then the five on the delay. He's got time. He's looking, but he's got this defender in his face. You need to put it here if you're going to hit him with it. Neither one of these guys is looking for it. Hit him. Hit him right here. This is where the rookiness, this is what he needs to work on. You got to hit this guy right here. Don't hit him. He's covered. He's not even ready for it. He's not looking for it. Got to hit your man right here. Boom. Hit him. Should have hit him by now. And then he would have potentially had to go up the field. Tries to step up. Takes a sack. Got to get that ball out. And again, that's a rookie thing that this kid can definitely learn how to do and how to get better at. Get the ball out. Learn to get the ball out quick. This play here is an incomplete pass, but it shows that why, especially for this game, there's a lot of underneath passes. If you saw before, he took the sack. Instead of throwing the underneath pass, the quick pass, I think that was Lim Bowden Jr. or Malcolm Perry. Here is the exact reason why. They try to run deeper routes, right? You have all these receivers running deeper routes, which you need time in the pocket to develop, right? You have the uh, running back doing a chip block, and all of a sudden, you, are, you can already see it here. He's got a ton of pressure in his face. Tries to drop it off to the other running back that stayed in. Patrick Laird overthrows it, but he, it's because he's getting – hit no time to throw absolutely then they sent four they only sent four but jesse davis again just getting manhandled had no time overthrew it on the hit this play here shows the the, the zip he has on the ball especially people underestimate how much umph you have to put behind a ball to throw it to the sidelines so this play here is a, a prime example of the zip that this kid has on his ball you're going to have Devontae Parker here on a curl route. You have, I think this is Shaquem Grant on an inside route. This is going to be an outside route, and this is just another curl route. But you could see he trusts Devontae Parker that he's going to beat his guy. He's going to run up, and he's already ready to throw that ball before he breaks on the curl, which is, you know, textbook quarterback. Because this defender is still looking this way, still expecting a uh, you know the route to go this way or inside or outside. He's not expecting him to go back. So he's ready. Ball's already out at that point. Gets it right where it needs to be. Right into his hands for the first down. It's just a, a great play where Tua anticipates the curl route, gets the ball out, trusts that Devontae Parker is going to beat that curl, have the corner behind him, puts the ball on his chest first down. At this point, Dolphins only down by three. It's 13 to 10 right now. Dolphins are still really in this game. Here is a play action play. Try to get something going. Uh, again, play action doesn't really work if your running game isn't there. You have Preston Williams in motion, which you'll notice that they start to do that as the season goes on. They have him in the pistol. They'll have the motion over. That's to see if they're in zone or man, and then it decides on Tua. You're going to run it, pass it, keep it yourself. He's going to play action here. <laughs> At this point, 
No one's open. Well, he could drop it off here, but again, that's to his back. Turns around to throw it. Not open. Not open. Not open. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then sack. And we'll look at this at the other angle to see what happened with this offensive line. Got Malcolm Perry in motion. They sent one, two, three, four, five at him. You have Adam Shaheen out here blocking nobody. And you have Eric Flowers falling on the ground, allowing the defender to get in, giving to a zero time to do anything. Now we're into the Cincinnati Bengal game. We're getting there, boys. We're getting there. You'll be surprised how much I have, probably had to edit out. <laughs> but we're, get, we're getting there. It's a lot of film, a lot of film to break down. Third down here. And you're going to have Tua force the ball to Gazicki here. But you'll see he had a guy wide open. Wide open. And this is all about decision making. This is stuff that can be learned. This is stuff that can be fixed. The stuff that I'm hearing from people that the intangibles he doesn't have. I don't see anything. You know, Josh Allen sucked at this. But, you know, he had these things that I st I don't know how you don't see it from these things. He can make throws. It's just the decision making needs a little bit of work. Because he sees here Gazicki running on this route. And he thinks, I'm going to fit this ball to him. And he tries to get it to him. Which Gazicki turns his body a certain way. Gazicki turns on the inside Tua, seeing that the defenders on the inside, tries to throw it to the outside, forcing Gazicki to turn his body. But if you look, before he throws the ball, because he does look this way. He looks at the bunch formation at the top of the screen. He throws, as soon as he sees this one-on-one, -on -one, he throws. If he would have just waited one more second, if he had that second, we don't know. He did. Look at Jakeem Grant. I think this is Jakeem Grant. <laughs> look. Wide open for a touchdown. I think that's actually uh, Lynn Bowden Jr. Wide open for a touchdown there. Th that's that's some of his things that he needs to work on is his decision making because sometimes he focuses too much on making a, a play down the field or making a certain play that he misses out on some other potential plays. Here's the play that everyone talks about. It's the deep pass to Jakeem Grant. And we're going to look at it. We're going to look at where the ball placement is. We're going to look at where he should have thrown it. Um, but this is another play where he throws it. A ton, like about 50 yards down the field because he's on his own five. You have Jakeem Grant in motion. It's going to be a go route. You have a curl route, a go route, a go route. <clears throat> and he decides. And he sees right here, he's beating him. He's beating him right here. I'm going to get this ball up to him. And Jakeem just drops it. I don't know how that could have been any better. He puts it right where it needs to be from his old goal line in the air f about 53, 54 yards. Hits him in the hands. And we'll look at it at the other angle to see is the is it the ball placement or is it Jakeem Grant? But he threw that 50-something yards in the air. In the air. Look at this. You got to catch that. You got, and that's not bad ball placement. That is not bad ball placement. Drop him back. Look at that. Look at that. Stends his arms. Drops it. That's on Jakeem Grant all day, every day. That's a great ball placement. Over the right shoulder. He had to th – uh, left shoulder. He had to throw it over the left shoulder because his defender's on the right. He had to put it right here over the left shoulder, right where it needed to be. Perfect pass. Drop ball. This is another play where the play kind of breaks down. And Tua tries to make something out of nothing. Rolls to his left and throws a beautiful pass. A beautiful pass. Where, Doug? down the field so what you'll see here empty set you have a curl route here you have an in route here you have an in route here you have a corner route here and you have a just a curl route here so there's a lot of let's just get the first down but we have Kaziki doing an out route here and of course pressure he rolls to his left beautiful man just decides hey i'm going to take off on my own drops it off to him right into his hands it's about 30 yards down the field, gets it where it needs to be. 
This is a play here where uh, Mike Gesicki actually bails out Tua here. It would have been incomplete, but he bails him out because he's just a ridiculous tight end. Fits it in here, you know, covered, covered. He could have probably thrown it to him, but has him. Has him in this pocket here. Kind of throws it a little too far ahead. Gazicki just being the Polish wonder he is, one hand catches it. Takes a hit, though, from two defenders. He's all right. He gets up. A little banged up here. But if you look at it from the other angle, Tua probably, probably, Tua should have put it down more. Here. Not up. Here. Right here. And he would have caught it. But you see he had to extend his body, bail him out, and catch it. He puts it down more. He'd probably be able to catch it and cr cradle and not take such a severe hit. This play here is the last Bengals play we're going to talk about. We'll get to the next game. But I talked about this on my live stream. I talked about this on Twitter. This is the uh, this is another situation where Tua needs to have better decision making. That's something that can easily be, be learned. But here you're going to have... Mac Hollins on an inside route, and you're gonna have Devontae Parker on an outside route. Mac Hollins is butt naked, wide open. But he forces it to Devontae Parker. And I've talked about this multiple times, and people say, like, You're too apologist. Da, da, da. No, I called him out. You need to make you need to make this throw because this throw is a touchdown here. Look at this. Covered, 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 but naked. But naked, but naked, but and by the time he throws it, yes, he had it here, but the defender knocks it out. But you had Mac Collins, but naked open. And we go to the Kansas City Chiefs game. This game, a lot of people say uh, that the defense wasn't playing for the second half. But if you look at this play here. It's another play. <laughs> I, th this is what I don't get. A lot of people, I don't understand where what they're watching. If they're just looking at stats, that makes sense because you see a ton of deep passes. get He attempts them, but they don't get completed, whether it's the receiver or him. But to say that he, he just a check down, man, he never tries to throw it down the field, that's just false. And I say it all the time because you'll see it here, right? You got a, a strong wing formation, a pistol formation. You got one receiver. He's going to go on a go route. He beat him. You never want to be in this situation when you're a corner. To his bread and butter, play action, roll to his left. He's got him. Throw it up, baby. Give it to him. But not like that. But he also had two defenders in his face, so I will say that. But not like that. But like that, right? On his back foot, falling back from the 16-yard line, gets it to him. Gets it to him to about the 42-yard line. That's the deep pass off his back foot again. It's a nice play there. Um, but you just want to plant your feet a little bit better. You want to plant your feet a little bit better on that comeback route. It's a very long comeback route. But you want to plant your feet a little bit better. But he got it to him on his off his back foot. But he doesn't have an arm. This is another deep pass. This one is to uh, Jakeem Grant on a big inside route uh they sent a ton on this one you got one two three four five uh coming at him give this kid time to read the field looking around he probably could have dumped it off to him but he sees that jakeem grant back here you know dump it off to him he's covered but he waits because he has the time takes the hit and he fits it right in here to jakeem grant doesn't throw it down the field though Right into Jakeem Grant. We'll look at a different angle of this one so you guys can see it. Looking at him. He looked at him. Then he looked on the outside. Then he threw it. Right where it needed to be. <laughs> right where it needed to be. He wasn't even looking. Look where he's looking. Look where he's looking. He's looking over here. Jakeem Grant is here. He's looking here. Still looking here. Look where he throws this ball. There's no velocity on that ball. I don't understand. I just maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. Obviously, it's dropped. Maybe I'm missing something. But 
I think Jakeem Grant should have caught that ball. I think you have Stefan Diggs over there. He's catching that ball. This is a great pass by Tua here. He puts this ball exactly where it needs to be to Mike Kaziki, who's running an outside route to the sideline. They're going to only send four here. Stunt. I told you, watch out for these stunts because this offensive line struggled a city against these stunts. Uh, covered two, if my brain is working correctly. You got the two safeties over the top. You got man-to-man -man here. Nope, sorry, zone here, uh, two safeties over the top. Mike Gazicki running this outside route. Huge cushion right here with pr somebody in his face. Gets that ball exactly where it needs to be. We'll look at this at a different angle so you can see it better. Only sent four. But <laughs> just in his face. This kid is making these throws with pressure in his face. Overthrew him a little bit. If I'm being a perfectionist, and I know some of you guys who don't like to want me to be a perfectionist, he overthrew him by a little bit. I would prefer that to be inside just a little bit more. Don't make him extend as much, right? Don't make him extend as much. Put it right where it needs to be. Don't make him extend as much. But he did fit it in between three defenders. Got it to Gaziki. Great pass. This play is just, I'm saying, this is what I've, I, I've been saying. And a lot of people say, well, they weren't trying at this point. At this point, the score was 0-0. Zero, zero. The score was 0-0 zero, zero, uh, zero, zero at this point. And he's making great throws here. Absolute great throws. I absolutely love this throw because of how he manipulates the defense with his eyes. Rolling out to his left, everyone thinks it's going to him or to him. That's where he's looking the entire time. Drops it off to the tight end for a touchdown. And we'll look at it from the other angle. If you watch his eyes, he manipulates the defense the entire time. As he's rolling to his left, he's looking, right? He's looking here. Look where he's looking. Here and here. Here and here. That's why the defense doesn't know. Defense looking at his eyes. He's looking here. He's looking here. Defense looking at him. This is where he's looking. So if I free, freeze frame this right now and you look at his eyes, look at his eyes. Where is he throwing this ball? He's throwing this ball to, to Adam Shaheen right here. Double covered. Horrible idea to it. Don't throw that ball. Not looking. Gazicki. Touchdown. Another example of a play that shows that the kid has it. The kid needs to get his decision-making down, his footwork down a little bit more. But plays like that show that he has it. And that's at the beginning of the game. That's not when the uh, Chiefs were not trying anymore. Great, great play. Love that play. Right here is a play where he didn't need to take the sack. Um, and there wasn't actually a man open here. You'll see it's a pistol formation. You got two wide receivers. You got Gaziki right here. And you're going to have the receivers. You have this guy open. Dump it off to him. Gazicki's not open. He's in triple coverage. You have two coverages here, and you have Devontae Parker open in the middle of the field. He is probably trying to force it to Gazicki down the field. Again, people say he doesn't like to throw down the field. I don't know what they're seeing. Um, but Devontae Parker, you have Devontae Parker right here. You even have this man right here, and he's looking down the field. So I, he's tr he wants this so bad, but he can't. Right here, man. Hello. Wide open. Wide open. Steps up. Takes the sack. This play here is another deep pass. It's underthrown, though. It's 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 underthrown. Uh, this one's on Tua. It's, again, a deep pass to uh, Jakeem Grant. Jakeem Grant is going to run, and he's going behind. I think this is Parker, and he's going to run a go route. Tua has all the time. He sees it. This should be a touchdown all day, every day. Cash it in. Touchdown. Because... Having this defender here, having this defender here, and having all of this real estate in front of, uh, of Grant is just cash money. But he un, un, underthrows it. I don't know why I couldn't say it. And makes um, to a, uh, makes Grant come back. And unfortunately, it's an interception. I think this is actually his first interception of the season. We'll, we'll watch it from the other angle. Underthrows him. Steps up. Avoids the sack. Great pocket presence there. It's just he lets it sail a little bit too much, underthrows him. And you could tell because it hits. Jakeem Grant has to jump up. 
and it hits him in the shoulder pads and the defense smacks it up. He catches that and he, if he hits it, he probably would have, should have, would have, should have thrown it a little sooner. He waited a little too long, put too much air under the ball, smacked the ball up, interception. Underthrown by two on that one. This is the butte. This is the butte. This is the touchdown pass to Mike Gazicki. Ah, oh, just the thing of beauty. Mike Gazicki's just on a go route. Go, go, in, in. Covered, covered. He could have gotten it to him too. I think this is Matt Collins. He could have thrown it to him, but he already had let the ball rip to Gazicki. And you could see when he let it rip, he Gazicki has a step on these defenders. You'll see. Boom. Looks at him. He is actually what he's doing here too is he's looking off the safety. He's looking over here at the safety, trying to look off this safety. So it's just these two. He lets it go, has him. Boom. Two is also very lucky. I'll show you a different angle that the other that he put the ball where he needed to, because the other defender almost smacked that down. Right here. Just exactly where it needed to be. That ball couldn't have been placed any perfect, but very lucky he didn't smack that ball down. So this is the Patriot game. Um, we're going to talk about the interception right here. This is a play that he learns from, and I'll talk about it, where he comes back and he doesn't make the same mistake again. But you have two here. You're going to have a lot of short routes here. Crossing route, outside route, outside route, inside route. A lot of these routes. And a lot of people think, Tua, just run it. You got a defender on your back. You got a defender in your face. You got a defender in your face. He tries to get this ball to him. But he throws it. And again, I'll give you another angle because you can't really see it here. He throws it as he's getting sacked. Which, just take the sack, my man. Don't try to... Don't try to make something out of nothing, which he does a lot. He tries to make something out of nothing. Just take the sack because you're getting hit while you're throwing the ball. So your trajectory on this pass is just garbo and it's an interception. So this is, like I said, this is the remake of that or the, the makeup for that. It's going to be another situation. We're down on the goal line against the, the Patriots home throw up back jerseys. Always should wear a throw back jerseys. As they afford in motion here. And it's another situation where you got an outside route, you got an inside route, an outside route here, curl route, boom, touchdown. Right here. And I think he sees it, but he also had a defender on his shoulder. So, yes, we can look at these routes and say, throw this touchdown here, but this guy's going to smack his arm when he goes to throw it. That's why he pulls his shoulder in. So that doesn't happen. All of these guys are now covered. Tua just takes off. Takes off on his own. And I'll show you again from another angle. You'll see when when um, I think it's Patrick Laird gets open or it's Adam Shaheen gets open, his arm would have got hit. Yeah, right here. Patrick Laird, he wants to throw it. You could see him looking. I'm going to throw it to Patrick Laird. The defender's in the air, and you see him. Very he, Tua does not want to throw the ball over. So he won't force passes that will cause that, and he won't do things to cause that. After this play, he went and said to Fitz, how is my ball security? And Fitz says, who cares? You scored, man. Who cares? You could see he wants to throw it to him, but he brings his arm in because look where the defender landed. And he just takes off on his own. Touchdown. Thought about what happened last time. I can't cause a turnover in the red zone when the game is this important. Keep the ball. Live to talk another day. This play here is an overthrow to uh, Mike Gazicki. You could see you got three uh, receivers running routes, one of them being Mike Gazicki, who goes from the one side of the field all the way to the other side of the field. And then you also have this player going on the inside, leaving a ton, a ton in to block because they were having a hard day blocking this Raiders defense. You see Gazicki has all this real estate in front of him, but unfortunately – underthrows him drastically here. I don't know why, because we saw plays before where he was making the throws that need to be made, but underthrows him drastically. We'll look at it from another angle here. Throws it way behind him. Right here. And I'm noticing that 
he did he kind of floated it. If you watch his throwing motion here, he kind of floated the ball. Right? It wasn't like see how he he finished with his hand the way it was? It was a floating pass. Got to give it a zip and you got to put it to the outside. Really put that ball out there for Gazicki cuz he would have caught that, but you got to give it to the outside. Under through that pass. Another prime example of what I was talking to you guys about before of uh, the stunts that they like to run. You're going to see this defender come to the inside and give to a no time to let anything develop. So he's expecting to block him. The routes are just coming off, right? They just started running their routes. And all of a sudden you see this defender go free right up the middle. No one's open yet. Right in his face. No one's open yet. Not one person's open because they like to run that those stunts, one inside, one on the outside, messes with the offensive line. No one's open. No one is open at all, sack. At this point in the game, I think two is in his head, personally. I think the amount of pressure he's taking in this game and the amount of sacks he's taking in this game is getting in his head because at this play, he rolls out when he doesn't need to, right? You see at this point, you got this receiver open. You have this receiver running this route. He's open. You could just stay where you are. But he decides to roll out to his left, which in turn, this defender, if you see, pulls that stunt. They love pulling this stunt on the Dolphins. Comes to the outside. Inside, outside. They loved pulling the stunt, the Raiders did. Um, but he could have stayed in the pocket. But he rolls to the left, pulls the stunt, doesn't see him, gets sacked. Because you could see when he starts to run, all of these guys, boom, open. Drop it off to here. You could drop it off to here. Just get the ball out. He takes the sack. Got to do better. And he can. These are things that can be taught. These are things that can be learned. So for comparison, I just want to, you know, this is Fitz's first uh, play in. And just for comparison, I want to show you the difference between when Tua is in and when Fitz was in, right? You're going to see they have four coming at him here. No stunt, right? Dropping all of this back into coverage. No stunt. Fitz has enough time, right? Drops it off here. Here's the thing. And a lot of people get on Tua that he doesn't push it down the field. They get on Tua say that, you know, he doesn't do certain things. If Fitz, Fitz didn't need to dump this off, right? He could have stepped up in the pocket. He dumps it off right here. He didn't need to dump it off because if you look, six right here. And Fitz can make this throw. We all know Fitz can make this throw. Six right here when he dumps it off. But people like to say, hey, two is check down, two is five yards, always, yada, yada. He had six right here. I'll show you again. Right? Got enough time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got enough time. Right? Boom. When he throws it, if he drops it right here, that's a touchdown. <clears throat> now, the final game of the season, the Buffalo Bills game. This one, we got, we got whomped. All around. This was a team loss. This wasn't on Tua. This wasn't just on the defense. This wasn't just on coaching. This wasn't just on the offensive line or the wide receivers. This was a team loss. The Bills came to make a statement, and they made it. Uh, but this play is just absolutely horrid by our offensive line because how in the world of sports did you expect Tua to do anything with that play? <laughs> Let's look at it at a different angle. How in the wide world of sports – did you expect him to do anything with that play? You got you Jesse Davis here puts Robert Hunt on a complete island with two defenders to decide who am I gonna block? And you just what what the Ted Karras not blocking anyone. Uh Eric Flowers block and uh Jackson blocking one guy. Who are you blocking? Why aren't you blocking him? You blocking him and you blocking him. Another play, Tua tries to throw it down the field. He's going to have a man to the outside running a streak route. And he actually gets time this time. I want to 
even say much time. You see the defender right here coming right at him. But he has his man one-on-one, -on -one, single high safety. The safety's cheating to the left side, so he has his guy one-on-one. -on -one, drops it up into the air and unfortunately not caught. We'll look at it at a different angle to see why that possibly was. But again, he didn't have much time because Austin Jackson, the, the, oh, the whole defensive line just got beat, but it was five cent. A little contact. A lot, uh, right here. Slowed him down. If if this contact doesn't happen, he doesn't get slowed down. He's catching that for a touchdown. Gazicki. Lots of contact there that wasn't called. But that contact slowed him down from him potentially catching that ball and taking it down the field. This pass here is a, a deep pass to, I think, Isaiah Ford. We were on Isaiah Ford a lot in this game because he had drops. But this one, I wouldn't necessarily give all of the fault to Isaiah Ford here. You see him running this inside route. A lot of deep routes on this one. It was a third and long or a second and long. A lot of deep routes. He had one short route, but he was trying to get it to Isaiah Ford here to the 40-yard line for the first down. Hits him in the hands. A little high, right? Should have caught it still. Again, that's Stephon Diggs. He's catching it. We've seen him make those catches. And if we look at it from another angle here. You got nah. I'm sorry. I'm looking at it from this angle. You got to catch that. You got to catch that. Any other wide receiver catches that. Any other wide receiver catches that. You got to catch that. Good play by the defense to punch the ball out, but you got to catch that to convert that first down there. Interception, the one where uh, Parker falls here. You'll see at the top of the screen. Gets pushed on, falls. But you could see when Tua throws it, right? Tua's going to drop back. Needs to get this ball out quick. Throws it here, expecting him to come to the inside, not knowing he's going to fall to the ground. It's unfortunately a pick six. We'll look at it from the other angle. Don't know if you can really see it from the other angle, but you'll see when he throws it. And he's looking the other way. That's not even his first read, but he's already falling down when he throws it. So that one's not on Tua. This was Tua's second interception of the game, and this is a pass that – this is this is interception's his fault because if you look, he tries to get this pass – right here throws it behind him ball gets tipped up interception we'll look at it again from the other angle <clears throat> at this point the game is just out of hand i think they're up 35 <laughs> tries to get the ball to him throws it way behind him ball gets tipped up in the air interception but looking at all of the film breakdown looking at the good the bad the ugly and there was a good amount of good there was some bad there was some ugly the whole point of me doing this is to show that a lot of people say, like I said, small, scared, doesn't throw over 20 yards. We've seen he tries multiple times to throw over 20 yards. That doesn't pan out. No arm strength. I actually saw a bunch of passes where he showed he does have some arm strength there. No pocket presence. We've seen pocket presence. Uh, slow. NFL Open versus Alabama Open. He was throwing contested footballs and no one-on-one. -on -one. Threw a lot of those. The whole point of me doing this film breakdown is to show, does he have his struggles? Did he have his struggles? Yes. He desperately needs to be better at making decisions. There's guys wide open that he takes sacks or he throws it to a cover guy when there's guys wide open. 100%. Foot placement needs to be a little bit better. He needs to plant his feet on some of those throws. Yes. Am I saying Tua is perfect? Am I saying Tua had a great season? Am I saying Tua is done? I don't understand. what. No. But the things that people are saying, I'm just like, what are you seeing? Oh, I don't see anything that shows Tua can be good. I've showed you a ton throughout this whole video of some great plays that Tua can improve on and become a really good quarterback. Potentially great. Potentially elite. We don't know. My whole point is give the kid a chance. But if you made it all the way to the end of this video, first off, thank you for watching. This was a big project. A lot, a lot, a lot of hours, especially editing and all that stuff. So I appreciate you watching the entire thing, making it to the end. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. We're, we're getting there. I think we're at 20,300. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. Give us a video thumbs up. Let's me know. Hey, Doug, we like the film breakdowns. Um, keep doing it. We'll see what happens with the uh, claims. I don't know. I still wanted to do this regardless if I'm getting monetized or not because I want you guys to see the good with the bad with the ugly so be sure to comment below let me know what you guys think of this video let me know what you think of the tape let me know 
Don't ignore the good. If you hate to it, don't ignore the good passes and don't make excuses for the good passes. Because I didn't make excuses for the bad passes where I said Tua needs to do better here, Tua needs to do better there. Acknowledge, he does well, but yes, he does struggle a little bit. So other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a big project that I had been working on. Uh, but other than that, like usual, stay classy. Things up.